God bless you tonight, one and all. To our pastor, to those of you in the Zoom room and on social media, we are so glad that we can come and review last week's lesson. And the lesson last week was lesson question 20. B. Before we begin, we'll have our disclaimer statement. While we use this book, the Westminster Shorter Catechism, to address the set of questions and answers as we travel through, we continue to meet up with statements that we do not agree with. Now, as we study to show ourselves approved, we will share with you our response to questions based on scriptures of the Holy Bible as we study God's word in context. Now, we know that some of you have the book and we advise you to take notes of where the differ in response and then go to the YouTube teaching of our session for our interpretation of scripture. Last week's lesson, the theme was Jesus, the Redeemer. The question, did God leave mankind to perish in the estate of sin and misery? And the answer is God having out of his mere good pleasure from all eternity did enter into a covenant of grace to deliver them out of the estate of sin and misery and to bring them into an estate of salvation by our redeemer. So we talked last week about a warning against the misunderstanding of God bringing us into salvation. Now we had fun last week by looking at different things that was displayed for us by our brilliant Pastor Seymour. Now we know we all have different understandings of things and we see things different. And this was the one that caught my eye because you can't see two different things here. Now, I don't know how many of you saw it, but there are two different things. Some may see one, some may see two, but there is all a shape of a dog and there is also a shape of a rabbit. Now that could be one of the misunderstandings because some people could be saying, how could you see a rabbit? How could you see a dog? But that is the misunderstanding that we all will have. And then also we have many people who have a misunderstanding of this picture. This is the picture that we all should be able to understand. But many people choose to misunderstand the dying of Christ, the coming and dying. But did Christ die? And yet there were two on the cross with him. One made it in and one didn't. Why? They don't get the full understanding. But as we go into this lesson, we'll see why there is a misunderstanding of the Redeemer. The Redeemer is the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. Now, the Holy Spirit is one member of the Godhead who draws you to Christ. Now, if you don't, if we don't allow the Holy Spirit, listen, we know when we feel the Holy Spirit. We try to do things, and yet, and I know many people have used this. I heard something saying to me not to. But the Holy Spirit is one member of the Godhead that does the drawing to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And many people do not get that full understanding. The question, there is a question that always comes into the minds of people when we talk about the drawing. The question that always arises in our minds 
as we think about this doctrine of an unconditional election is this. Why has God chosen this man and not that man? Or, in other words, it seems to sinful man as if this were not quite fair. And we know when one thing is chosen over another, many people think it's unfair. But then there is another question that arises. The doctrine of unconditional election seems to make salvation completely automatic. In other words, as some may say, well, if God has chosen me to be saved, then I'll be saved no matter what. My answer to these two questions is there's choice. We have to remember. The Bible does not teach that men will be saved automatically. It does not teach that men will be saved no matter what they do. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word in Romans chapter 3 and verse 29. The Bible says, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And to whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Meaning this, that first of all, salvation, which is ours by choice, comes from justification. First of all, we're justified because of the holiness of God. Then we become sanctified because that's the process that we have to go through once we've accepted salvation. And then we will be glorified on that day. We will be, once we've gone through with Jesus, we will be glorified by Jesus Christ. So if a man is elect, it does matter what he does. For if he must repent of his sins, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and be saved according to his plan, which we see in our book on page 79, we learned that in Adam, we all fell. So we didn't have a choice there. Adam caused us all to fall. Our choice comes in Jesus Christ. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and have hoped through Jesus Christ. That's our choice. Do we want Jesus Christ? If we do, we make that choice. And the parties in the covenant of grace are the Father and the Son who represents us. The condition of this covenant is that Christ, by partaking of human nature, fulfilled all demands of the Lord in order to receive the promise of life to give to his people and the promise of the Father to grant eternal life to all those who represent by Jesus Christ. Now we talked about doors and there are many doors, but there is only one door that we have to choose to go through. And that's the door, Jesus Christ. And in 2 Peter 3 and 9, it tells us that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some man count slackness, but is long suffering to us, with not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It is mankind who choose to deny the salvation offered by God. God gives the gift. It's men that chooses to deny it. No, the willingness is entirely due to their own sinful preference for not coming to him. We choose whether we want God or we don't. Second Peter. Another scripture tells us, chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. 
For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly in the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we have learned down through this lesson that the Redeemer is Jesus Christ. Why? Because the question asks us, did God lead mankind to perish in the estate of sin and misery? The answer is God having out of his mere good pleasure from all eternity did enter into a covenant of grace to deliver them out of the estate of sin and misery and to bring them into an estate of salvation by a redeemer, Jesus the redeemer. Put your hands together, sounding just like a mighty teacher. Well done there, Chief Reverend Trot. Very clear. You know, I, I will add at this point, when you read that scripture, we have to make our calling and election sure. It sounds like it's automatic to anybody. No, we must, we, not only must we make our calling and election sure, then we got to keep on going through sanctification. Sounds automatic to anybody? Nah, that's a trick of the enemy. It's not once saved, always saved. And it's not, I don't have to do anything. I'm just making it in. No, so we can't preach a dead person and an unsaved person into heaven. I'll say it over and over again. Give them the wings, give them the angels. By the way, God doesn't need another flower. He don't need an angel. He don't need any of that. What we're doing is we're easing our own guilty consciousness because we're not in relationship with them. God does not need you to be taken out of the world as a sinner. He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So he ain't happy about receiving a flower that didn't worship him on earth. We got we to gotta tell the truth because we're training our children. And that's why many of them don't care how they ride and the rest of it. Because what election they're going to make sure about what? Haven't been told about it. Haven't lived unto God. These are serious, more and more serious times. Sanctification, that's right. Test trials, we must have tests and trials to grow in the kingdom. You better believe it. It's what the disciples went through. Thank you, Deaconess uh, De Silva. All of those disciples went through things. No, we don't want to go through. You're going to go through. If you're sanctified, you're going to prove that you've been sanctified. Tests and trials will do that. Thank you again, uh, Reverend Esther Trott, for that thorough review. At this time, we're going to welcome on board uh, Reverend Jennifer Oboy, and she is going to Lead out in the teaching. Put your hands together for Reverend Jennifer. Good evening, Pastor. Thank you very much. Good evening to our class in Zoom. Good evening to those on social media and eventually on SWIM24. We greet you. Uh, first of all, we would like to honor God, our Father, His Son, Jesus Christ, who is coming soon as a victor and our comfort of the Holy Spirit. We would like to thank all of those, the senior leadership and the leadership of Shekinah and the Shekinah family. I would also like to thank our team, which someone who is an elder on our team called the A-Team, thanking our group leader, Reverend Stephen Trott in his absence, Elder Juliet Rogers, Mother Maxine De Silva, Deaconess Tyra Simmons, our sister Dion Hackett and our young brother Zephaniah, we would like to greet you in the name of Jesus to this teaching. And if at any time you ever want to go ahead and just praise God in this teaching, feel free to do so. Just let it go. Tonight's teaching is from the Westminster Shorter Catechism, and we are doing question 21A. And the question is, who is the redeemer of mankind? The answer, the only redeemer of mankind is the Lord Jesus Christ. There is only one. And our theme, the only redeemer, 
Jesus, and we celebrate that he is our only redeemer. He came for us and our proof scriptures for tonight. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word for this entire lesson. For there is only one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ, 1 Timothy 2 and 5. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, John 1, 14. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood, Hebrews 7, 24. When the question is asked, who is the redeemer? Let's look and see what a redeemer is. Easton's Bible Dictionary defines the word redeemer as one charged with the duty of restoring the rights of another by avenging his wrongs. Can I read that again? One charged with the duty of restoring the rights of another by avenging his wrongs. This title is particularly applied to Christ. He redeems, he redeems us from all evil by the payment of a ransom. 1 Corinthians 6.20, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So it may be free to us, but it came at a hefty price. We have our Mother D. Silva to read the next two slides beginning with Old Testament. Here began the reading of God's holy word. In the Old Testament, there has to be a sacrifice made by the shedding of blood from animals for the atonement of our sins. Leviticus 4, 35. And he shall take away all the fat thereof, as the fat of the lamb is taken away from the sacrifice of the peace offering, and the priest shall burn them upon the altar according to the offerings made by the fire unto God. And the priest shall take an atonement for this for his sin that he has committed, and it shall be forgiven him. Jesus Christ's blood was shed for a ransom of payment to secure our release from bondage and sin. It was his very own life that was offered up as the price of redemption for our own. This was the greatest substitute ever made. He took on the very thing that man couldn't keep and fulfilled it through the shedding of blood. He became the ultimate sacrifice. Thank you very much, Mother De Silva. Ephesians 1, 7, King James Version. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of grace. First Peter 1, 18, 19, King James Version. For as much as ye know that ye are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. So some may ask, what are we redeemed from? And the answer, we are redeemed from the curse of the law. Galatians 3.13, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. We inherited the DNA of Adam, so through the fall of man we are born. Under the same curse that God placed on mankind from the beginning, Jesus puts himself in place of the law instead of his people in order to fulfill it so we are no longer bound by the curse of the law that came through disobedience. Born again believers in Jesus Christ have been redeemed from the law and now have been put under the law of grace. And if you look at the slide, it says, I still believe in amazing grace. There is power in the blood that he walks with me and talks with me that because he lives, I can face tomorrow. 
all because of the old rugged cross. And Elder Rogers, if you can continue to read, please. Redeemed from the power of sin. Colossians 1.14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Hebrews 9.15, and IV version. For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant, that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. Jesus has set us free from sin as Christians. We don't have to be a slave to sin. He has redeemed us from the guilt of sin we inherited from Adam. Thank you, Elder Rogers. Okay, here are the reasons. There are modern ecumenical movements who digress from the true saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. There is a conception that says, that there is saving truth in all religion for those who are sincere and earnest. Through this movement, some churches belong to the World Council of Churches have changed the mission of the gospel. Some stir away from Jesus being the only way and have conformed to believe that there are many ways to God. Now, we looked up the word ecumenical and we have a definition a of relating to or representing the whole body the whole of a body of churches and we have to be careful because not all churches believe in the saving power of jesus they don't b promoting or tending toward worldwide christian unity or cooperation c worldwide or general in extent influence or application we have to be careful of who prays for us. We have to be careful of who says there are churches for Jesus, even when they have a lot of colors flying and we know that it goes against God's will. We have to look into this. Many have been fooled to think that this is right, especially when high profile celebrities have endorsed this false teaching, i.e. Oprah Winfrey. Deaconess Tyra. Good evening, and what do some say? Here we have a YouTube video for you to watch. I believe this is where Oprah Winfrey rejects our Lord Jesus Christ. Have a watch and listen. The panel has been discussing the spirituality and the forces of God, but I also believe that there are two forces that are here with us, that we do have our, our, our God that we can depend on, but there's also a power of darkness that we do need to be aware of. And, and that's you, where the choice is. Do you begin. believe that, uh, that you can choose between one or the other? Most, most absolute definitely. Yeah. Now, we are given that now Marianne uh, Williamson says in her book, Return to Love, that we're always walking in the direction of one or the other, that all of your actions in life, either you're moving toward the darkness or you're moving toward the light. Right. She calls it fear and love. There's this wonderful book called Ishmael by Daniel Quinn, which talks it which which is anyway, it's a gorilla talking, but anyway. <laughs> uh, it talks about one of the points it brings out is one of the mistakes that human beings make is believing that there is only one way to live That's and right. that we don't accept that there are diverse ways of being in the world that there are millions of ways to be a then human being and, and many ways no but many paths no to what you call god that and her path pleasing. might be something else and when she gets there she might call it the light but her loving and her kindness and her generosity brings her if it brings her to the same point that it brings you it doesn't matter whether she called it god along the way or not and i guess the danger that could be on that i mean it it sounds great on the onset but if you really look at both sides I there could possibly be just one way what what about jesus what about jesus and you say there isn't only one way there is one way and only one way, and there that is through be. Jesus. There couldn't possibly be with because a million you of people say in the world. There, isn't. there couldn't possibly be. Because you say, you intellectualize it and say there isn't. If no. you don't believe that, you're all buying into the lie. But that makes you right. Do you think, do you think that if you, if you are somewhere on the planet? Yeah. Yeah. 
Where are you some, if you're somewhere on the planet and you never hear the name of Jesus, you never hear the name of Jesus, but yet you live with a loving heart, you lived as Jesus would have had you to live, you lived for the same purpose that Jesus came to the planet to teach us all, but you are in some remote part of the earth and you never heard the name of Jesus. You cannot get to heaven, you think? And that is covered in the scriptures, too. The People are talked about Truly. that. God knows the heart. Does God care about your heart or does God care about if you call his son Jesus? Well, you know, Oprah, God, Jesus cannot come back until that gospel is preached in the four corners of this earth. So, you know, figure it out. Okay. Okay, I can't get into a religious argument with you. Just a little background. That was, when I looked on YouTube, that was 11 years ago. She has so many followers for people who do not read the Bible. How many will be swayed to what Oprah and her minions would say as to the lady who actually defended what the Bible says? How many will actually look it up? So let's see what the Bible does say. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. And if Jesus answered, that meant that the question was asked. Elder Rogers, can you please read? Thank you. We must hold fast to scripture that teaches that Jesus is the only way the redeemer of mankind. But why is Jesus the only redeemer of mankind, you may ask? He qualifies to take on this rule because Jesus is God. Remember from our earlier teachings that scripture proved that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are God. Thank you, Elder Rogers and Deaconess Tyra. Here are four things in that we find in scripture to support this. Jesus Christ is called God. Isaiah 9, 6, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He has the attributes of God, John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He does the mighty works of God, John 5, 21. For as the father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the son quickeneth whom he will. He is given the worship that belongs properly to God, Revelation 5, 12 through 14. Saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever. Thank you, Deaconess. We learned in previous lessons that there are those who still deny Jesus of the Bible. One of them are the Jehovah's Witness who believe that Jesus only became divine. We learn that they believe in God the Father created Jesus and that he is only our God in comparison to the Father. This we proved to be false as we covered this through scripture back in question number six. Jesus is equal with the Father and the Holy Spirit in power and glory and the same in substance. This Jesus is the only redeemer of mankind. So question 21 again says, who is the redeemer of mankind? The only redeemer of mankind is the Lord Jesus Christ. With our theme, the only redeemer, Jesus. Thank you very much. May God add a blessing to this teaching.